Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. I've had a lot of trouble getting this one done. I don't know, my OBS is messing with me and uh, I will not lose more time in introduction. <laughs> Today we are going to do a photo mode overview of Atlas Fallen. It's because uh, Atlas Fallen released a new free DLC with new content and I'm happy to dive back in this game. I didn't have my channel back in the day when the game released, so it's the perfect occasion for me to do the photo mode overview. By the way, I want to thank Focus Entertainment for providing me the game last year. And also know that we are playing today on GeForce Now because the game is accessible on GeForce Now. So. Thank you GeForce now for providing me access to an ultimate account. Um, with no further ado, guys, let's dive into it. All right, so to open the photo mode, you have actually two options. First is very obvious. You just go in the pose menu and then you can access the photo mode option here. But there is a more hidden one and I want to showcase that. So you go to settings first, you open gameplay and HUD option, which is the first one. And then you have here the photo mode. Oh, just here, you can see it under me. You have the photo mode shortcut, you check the box and then it doesn't say what is the shortcut, but it actually is a press of the two joysticks at once. So you want to apply that. And then you can access it way more easily than with the, the escape menu shortcut. So there you go. When you open the photo mode, you have a pretty basic nowadays um, templates. On the left side, you have uh, some prompts for the camera movement, cam up, cam down, move, rotate. Now <clears throat> it's the perfect time to check the type of camera. So we have a free camera, which is perfect. And also we have a very good range, so maybe it's not the best place to showcase this, but you can go super far from your character. So it's really cool for a lot of nice shots that we can have in this game and environments. On the right side, you have the main tabs. The first tab, that is the camera one. So let's check it out right now. You have the camera speed thing so it's pretty cool you can go fast or slow now slow is not slow enough for me for really close-ups and stuff like this we might see this in a minute with the controller it's still a bit complicated especially the rotation movements it's, it's still a bit complicated to to be super precise but you can still jump on your mouse if you prefer um, for really really precise movement on the other hand uh, fast movement is really cool especially because you have this big range of camera distance so you want to cover a lot of distance fast and this one works really well so yeah don't hesitate to use this also it would have been better to have just a press of a button to just you know like like in game if you run you just have to press l3 you know, the left uh, stick, you, you can use this in your camera movement as well. Uh, if you make a photo mode that that's uh, much, much more intuitive for users. But anyways, you have this camera roll. It's a uh, 90 degrees roll. The, the way the slider moves is a bit annoying because first it will go super slow like this, slow, 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 and suddenly super fast. And yeah, it, it, it's a bit annoying when you just want to come back in the center, although you have a reset option that we will talk about in a minute. Okay, field of view now is just the same. You can go super, super close, it's super nice for close-ups. Now you have the focal length thing that is pretty nice. We have this uh, recently on Alan Wake mode too. It's basically presets of, you know, different lengths. So you have the, the 400 millimeters that is the most, um, you know, close up. So you have 400, 250, uh, 80, 42, 25, 20, 14 
and 10 and 8. So with those settings, you can go way beyond the field of view slider that is now at 160. But the minimum, if you move this slider, the minimum is 90. So use this if you want a super wider thing for some reason. I mean, it's obviously not the most aesthetic thing, especially if you are really close. Yeah, <laughs> why not? I mean, you never know, you, you might have a, a use for it. All right, then you have the grid. Grid is off or on. Don't forget to take it off if you want to take your shot because it will not disappear with the hide and restore um, thing for the UI. I mean, it, it's better to not hide it with the UI because you need a clear view to make your, your composition, but don't, don't forget to take it off. So good opportunity here to showcase that you have a reset button. You can see here down there, uh, it's the X button on Xbox. It's the square button on, on PlayStation controller. And you need to hold it and it will reset this tab, all right? It's a reset for each tab, which is better than nothing. But having a hold button for resetting just one or two sliders, I think it's a bit annoying. I would prefer to have uh, just a one push button for each slider and a hold button for all the photo mode settings at once. But it is what it is. So we are on the depth of field tab, so let's check it out. Depth of field in this game is actually good. Um, the depth of field tab works pretty well and this is quite rare, <laughs> so Really happy with that. Let's uh, try with some close up or something so we can showcase it a bit better. All right, so if you go super close up for portrait, for instance, and you have your focus distance super, super close from the camera, okay, you can see it now it's at 0 0.73. Then I put my aperture at minimum so you can see all the maximum blur possible. And the blur strength is at max as well. So if you put the blur strength strength down to zero, you will still have a bit of blur uh, happening. But if you if you put it at max, it will be even more st strong, of course. Now the aperture is very very um, precise, I guess. So now it's all blur, right? Now watch the the forehead of my character. And I'm going to put my focus point. If I move just from one, <laughs> one tick, I'm going to have my focus point on the eyes. For instance, it's still the cheeks are blurred. You can see that. And if I push it behind my character, and you can see now the shoulder are getting in focus at some point, there we go. The near fo focus part will will move away. So right now the, the forehead of my character and the nose are blurred again. And then the, the eyes, etc. Right. And so let's move on to the next tab, which is exposure. It will be super fast. This tab is useless. It's really not well made. So let's check it out. The brightness thing is not really brightness it's just uh, like a gamma uh, slider so you will be having a super super white veil on your your shot i mean you can use it i guess in some situation to lift up the blacks but you will really need to keep it super close to the default values which is 50 0 0.50 51 52 maybe might be helpful but that's not a real brightness stuff then you have the same with dark it will just make your your blacks super super strong so yeah really hard to use properly sharpness you know sharpness again it works but if you put it too strong it will be really not looking good um but yeah why not a bit be careful with the edges of your 
elements uh, with the sharpness and saturation is actually looking pretty good maybe not here but on some some environment it, it works well it's not too saturated and you you can get some really cool colors too bad you don't have a rgb curves or um, a settings or control because the filters that are on the next uh, tab are not enough to really balance and make what you want without post editing so um, yeah effect next tab effect uh color grading so that's the filters you have three i think neutral filmic that is a bit more with more um, contrast which is another setting that lacks in the in the photo mode uh, and green for some reason they just put green not not red not and those ones you cannot change the intensity of it so that's a that's a miss here but yeah i mean sometimes the filmic one can be helpful especially if you if you use it with saturation to zero because it makes some uh, it makes some better black and white but you can see that here with the exposure brightness down it's suddenly let me try without the vignette oh yeah if you take off the vignette maybe the the brightness can help you make more dramatic um, black and white shots so why not then you have the chroma shift it's the chromatic aberration note that i took it off in my game settings so it's pretty cool that the photo mode still allows you to have it if you want it it's on by default, so you, you have to take it off every time you, you open it. But yeah, so the intensity is at max here. Vignette, vignette is on by default as well, but you can take it off or you can play on the size of it. Like this and the smoothness of it, which will reduce drastically. Um, the circle of light that you ha you have and you can have a super strong shaped oval note that that's as small as you can get it so you cannot use it really as a frame last tab is the frames one uh, so good transition here you have different things you have the aspect border the, so those are the normal aspect ratio and you can change to black to white. So in most recent photo modes, you now have a control of the color of those bars, which is a bit of a gadget, obviously, but, but yeah, it can help. Here it's just black or white. Then you have the border, which is di a different thing. It's more what we call frame usually in the, in the game. So you have black edges. I don't know if it's really shown here, but it's just on the, the sides it's kind of ripped uh, paper aspect you have this one uh, you have the white edges and that's the uh, first thing i want to mention here you cannot change the color of those and that's really a shame because i would like to have this one in white but you can't so i would like to have this one in black and i can't and same here this white one looks pretty cool though i like the i like the the effect here i'm not a big user of these but yeah i like this one but i would like to have it in black or other colors then you have some kind of you know um shaped thing so yeah it could be nice for some shots but definitely not the most important then you have the usual um decorative ones framed and things like that this one is nice it cannot really show here but it, it makes it as if it was an open door from a, a temple or something in stone and that's it then you have the logo logo is just the same mess as usual when they use this template they want the logo in but we cannot use it so you have it on or off and then if it's on you can put it in top center top left uh, top right mid center etc so the nine locations but you cannot change the size of it you cannot move it around freely which would be much easier much more useful and you cannot rotate it so for um, vertical shots it's useless so no thanks and then final tab 
you have this uh, character tab. So it's a bit specific here because we are in a special mode with the DLC. Um, it's not the usual main character with the armor. So let me explain something. So you have the helmet option that you can put on or off. So if it's the normal character, it will literally hide the helmet. Uh, here with this character, it's kind of a fun thing. It will hide the hair. So no hair anymore. The big, the long one. So that's it. That, that's all you can hide. So it's a bit weird, actually. Um, and if you hide the helmet, you have access to facial expressions. So again, in the normal mode uh, with the normal character, of course, you will need to hide the helmet to have the facial expression. But with this new mode, they would have they should have think about this because now you cannot have different expressions, facial expressions with the hair. You, you need to have the no hair to have the facial expression. So anyways, the usual facial expression, friendly, happy, it's kind of cringe. I, I kind of hate this. Sometimes it can be use, useful, but yeah, I don't like it. Look at these eyes. It's really... It's here, uh, but you have the character pose as well. And those are pretty cool. So let me just circle them. So you have this, you have uh, different positions. You have some action positions, sitting positions, uh, things like that. You have this one where you float around. Yeah, pretty cool pose. Um, so yeah, I like this one, for instance selfie peace sign so you have some funny ones some serious ones so yeah cool then you have the look at camera option so you know you can make the character look at your camera of course it's not completely possible in every angle so the the eyes won't follow but still pretty good enough to to get the to get some cool things happening and then you have the player character that you can hide completely if you like. Too bad you don't, you cannot hide the enemies. It's just for the character. Again, a missed opportunity. One other thing that I want to mention in the um, in the focus thing is that you have an autofocus possibility by uh, pressing the R joystick. And usually in this recent photo mode. It, it's messed up. It doesn't work properly. Even in Alan Wake 2 mode, it doesn't work. This one works well. So let me show you. So it usually works well. Uh, sometimes it doesn't catch the character, but yeah, usually it does. So for instance, if I come here and I put the, the autofocus on the gauntlet, you can see that the character behind it is uh, super blurred. And now I repress my uh, R3 button. I disengage the autofocus, if you will. I can play on the focus on uh, the blur strength on the aperture as well. And if you move around, it will keep the focus where you wanted it, so on the gauntlet. So it, it's useful for sometimes. All right, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Overall, this photo mode is not bad. Just like a lot of photo mode recently, we have the basic covered. We have a good range, we have free cam, so that's definitely the most important, of course. But still, a lot of options are lacking. Uh, contrast, a proper brightness uh, option would be nice. Having control on uh, red, green and blue uh, curves would be amazing and really easy to implement. Uh, also, the cam character positioning uh, is okay because you have the face thing, the position thing, but being able to rotate the character or just move it on, on you know, even just a close location, like a lot of photo modes do now, would be perfect. Obviously, a custom light system would be welcome. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if they ever plan to, to make an update of this photo mode, but... but you have some things to work with, definitely. That's not the worst photo mode out there. That's not the best. But that's it. The game is amazing. I was uh, I was launching it this morning to make this video and I ended up playing three hours before actually starting the video because I was just caught 
in the gameplay again because it's really it's really fun to play please check this game if you don't know it if you don't own it grab it it's fun uh, thank you i will see you in the next video probably this week if possible i have a love and shout out uh, episode planned so stay around and subscribe to the channel if you're new here keep snapping i'll see you next time